Welcome everybody, my name is Tim Sandy and I'm a VMware Technical Partner Manager and Systems Engineer. In today's session, I'm going to talk about uh, what's new with vSphere 6.5, which is our newly released version. And I'm going to give you a technical overview of it. And this is going to be a three-part series. I'm going to break it down because of all the information included within the vSphere 6.5 update. I wanted to break it down into some smaller chunks. So there's going to be a three-part series and this is part one of three. So the first one, we're going to talk about predominantly vSphere and vCenter administration. We announced the vSphere 6.5 announcement at VMworld Barcelona 2016 last week. So this was a new announcement and the GA date will be later on sometime in Q4. And without further ado, let's get started. So to simplify what's new in vSphere 6.5, we can break the advancements down into three primary categories under vSphere and vCenter server administration. The first is we dramatically simplified the administrator's experience, which makes IT more efficient than ever before. The second is we've added comprehensive built-in security into vSphere 6.5 to secure your entire data center. And the third is that it provides a universal application platform giving you the ability to run any application anywhere. So let's take a closer look into each one of these areas. So we're going to start off discussing what's new with vSphere administration, again for vSphere 6.5. Now if you remember correctly, back in vSphere 6.0, we saw some performance and scalability parity for the vCenter server appliance when it compared to its Windows-based counterpart. With vSphere 6.5, we now see future, or excuse me, feature parity and even new features that are exclusive to the vCenter server appliance. Let's take a quick look at each of these new features before addressing them in more detail a little bit later. So first, we have vCenter's high availability, which is a native HA solution built right into the appliance. Using an active, passive, and witness architecture, vCenter is no longer a single point of failure and can provide a five-minute RTO time frame. This HA capability is available out of the box and has no dependency on shared storage, raw device mappings, or external, device, uh, external databases. So next we have the integration of VMware Update Manager into the vCenter server appliance. Some customers have been holding off on migrating to the vCenter server appliance due to the last dependency on the Windows machine. Now VMware Update Manager is included by default into the vSphere, or excuse me, vCenter server appliance and makes deployment and configuration a snap. Another exclusive feature of the vCenter server appliance 6.5 is the improved appliance manage, management capabilities. The vCenter server appliance management interface continues its evolution and exposes additional health and configurations. The simple user interface now shows network and database statistics, disk space, and health in addition to CPU and memory statistics, which reduces the reliance on using a command line interface for simple monitoring and operational tasks. And finally, VMware has added a native backup and restore capability to the vCenter server appliance in 6.5. This allows for simple out-of-the-box backup options in addition to the traditional supported methods including data protection and also the vSphere storage APIs for data protection. This new backup and restore mechanism allows customers to use a simple user interface to remove reliance on third-party backup solutions to protect their vCenter server and platform services controllers. Now you may remember that backing up vCenter server with our vSphere data protection appliance sometimes would have some issues with backing up vCenter and it wouldn't complete successfully. Now that we have this backup capability and restore capability right within the vCenter server appliance, this is going to be much more efficient, the backs would be done quicker, you can restore quicker, and it's just a, ver a much better solution. And as a reminder, all these new features are only available in the vCenter server appliance, not the Windows-based version of the vCenter server. The vCenter server appliance deployment experience has also been enhanced in vSphere 6.5. Cosmetically, the user interface has had a facelift, but more importantly, the installation workflow is now performed in two primary stages. The first stage deploys the appliance with the basic necessities, such as IP address, host name, sizing information including storage, memory, and CPU resources. In stage two, it then completes the configuration by setting up SSO and role-specific settings. 
The Stage 2 deployment has a number of benefits. First, improved validations let customers deploy with confidence. Once the Stage 1 is complete, customers can also now take a snapshot of the VM and roll back if any mistakes are made in Stage 2. So again, making the deployment much simpler and then easier to recover from an error, not having to start from scratch. So once you deploy Stage 1, you go ahead and take a snapshot, and then you do Stage 2. So again, this prevents customers from having to start completely over if anything was to go wrong during the deployment process. Also, customer can create a template from the appliance VM after stage one, which can save them valuable time when deploying multiple instances or to aid in conforming to their own deployment standards or conforming rather to their deployment standards. Also of note, there are versions of deployment applications available for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. In addition, there's no plugin required in order to run the new deployment application, which allows for truly cross-platform installation experience. The new vCenter Server appliance allows you to migrate from vCenter Server 5.5 or 6.0 directly to 6.5. vSphere Update Manager, or VUM, is an included portion of the migration that is completed. The migration supports both embedded and external database configurations for MS SQL, MySQL Express, and Oracle. The Migration Assistant also performs a pre-check to ensure the migration will complete successfully before starting the migration. You can also migrate your historical and performance data as well. The new vCenter Server Appliance Management Interface is still accessed via port 5480 for any vCenter Server or Platform Services Controller appliances. This refreshed user interface now includes additional resource utilization graphs to provide a simple to consume virtualization of CPU, memory, disk, and database metrics. The screenshot to the right shows the new vCenter database monitoring screen that provides some great insight into the PostgreSQL database disk usage to help prevent crashes due to running out of space. There are also new default warnings presented in the vSphere web client to alert administrators when the database is getting close to running out of space and a graceful shutdown mechanism at 95% full to prevent database corruption. Customers can also configure syslog in this improved VAMI interface. Finally, under the hood, we see some significant improvements in the Watchdog Services department with a new service lifecycle framework called vMon. VMON unifies the previous five watchdog services in vCenter Server 6.0 as a single source of truth to simplify managing and monitoring vCenter Server services. VMON also helps to track and keep track of these service dependencies, which could become quite complex. Additionally, features such as vCenter HA will take advantage of vMon to help make decisions as to when to fail over to another node. New in vCenter Server 6.5 is the native backup and restore capabilities for the vCenter Server appliance, as I stated earlier. This new out-of-the-box functionality enables customers to backup vCenter Server platform service controller appliances directly from the VAMI or API. The backup consists of a set of files that will be streamed to a storage device of the customer's choosing using either SCP, HTTP or PS, or FTP or FTPS protocols. This backup fully supports vCenter server appliance with embedded and external platform services controllers. The restore workflow is launched from the same OSI file from which you launched the vCenter server appliance or PSC that you originally used again to deploy or upgrade. You can see from the lower screenshot that we have a new option to restore right from the deployment user interface. There's also an option to encrypt the backup files using symmetric key encryption, making sure those backups are safe. A much needed new feature is the native vCenter High Availability, or HA. The HA supports an external PSC and potentially in the future releases the embedded PSC. HA is configured with one vCenter server as the active and one as a passive with a witness. During failover situations, it will automatically fail over. Now, if you're already in the vSphere web client and actively using it, you may not even realize that it's failed over. Worst case scenario, what may happen is you just have to re-log back into the vSphere web client. Here's a picture of where things stand with the vSphere 6.5 release. There are five main management interfaces. The first and probably the most currently used is the vSphere web client. This interface continues to be based on the Adobe Flash platform and requires Flash to use. The successor to the vSphere web client is the HTML5-based vSphere 
client. With vSphere 6.5, we have a fully supported version of the vSphere client that will run alongside the vSphere web client. We will not have the full feature parity at GA, however, we will be aiming to release updates on a quarterly time frame. Next, we've revamped the appliance management user interface that we spoke about earlier. This is also an HTML5 interface that provides a simple and efficient user interface to manage the vCenter server appliance itself. We also have a similar interface that is specific to the platform services controller where the SSO configuration can be managed. This includes SSO user and groups, identity sources, and certificate management all wrapped in another clean HTML5 interface. And finally, and staying with the HTML5 theme, we have the host client. The host client also started out as a VMware fling, but made it into production as of vSphere 6.0 update 2. The host client replaces the need for the legacy vSphere C Sharp client when administrators need to connect directly to an ESXi host for either configuration or troubleshooting. As some of you may know or remember, the current vSphere web client requires the browser client integration plugin, or SIP. The SIP plugin was somewhat troublesome to work with and caused numerous issues when especially deploying the vCenter server appliance initially. It also had to be upgraded with each vCenter version update. Now with vCenter 6.5, it is no longer needed that we're now using the native browser functionalities. The only exception to that is if you're going to implement SSPI or smart card for two-factor authentication with the vSphere web client, we will require an optional plugin called the Enhanced Authentication Plugin. But otherwise, we no longer need that uh, client integration plugin, which is definitely a blessing. In vSphere 6.5, I'm excited to introduce the new and improved vSphere client built on HTML5 that I mentioned in previous slides. In parallel with the replatform effort, we're taking the opportunity to make the new vSphere client more usable. Here's a sample screen from the client. You'll notice right away that it's cleaner, tighter layout with less white spaces. We're flattening the layers of navigation to make it easier to find things and more similar to the FAT client that we had before. I'll highlight a few changes on this particular page. For example, as our customer's environment grow, search becomes more important. As such, we are featuring a new global search that's making it much more accessible to finding any object within vCenter and your entire environment. You also notice that we're moving away from the right-hand pane of alarms and tasks to give you more horizontal workspace. Those panes have been relocated to the bottom where there is more room to show the relevant information as well. Next, the feedback tool. This is something that we've added and that can be super popular with our customers and very helpful for us as well. Essentially allows the user to directly provide instant feedback to the product team. You can include a screenshots as well. Since we released the fling of the HTML5 vSphere client, we've received hundreds and hundreds of pieces of feedback. We've shortened the feedback cycle significantly for us. This has helped dramatically with that, and as a result, we've been able to make a number of changes as suggested by the customer feedback that we received on that fling. So this is just a real simple example of the type of changes that we've made within the vSphere web client. You'll find them throughout the product with the aim of making you much more productive using the vSphere web client. Another much needed advancement is also the vSphere web client. As I mentioned in previous slides, another advancement was our vSphere web client, the HTML5 base. You know, the current Flash-based web client was very, was very clunky and it also had some performance issues. When you're clicking around, it was sometimes very slow to responding. But again, this new version of the vSphere web client is based on HTML5, which is much more responsive and easier to use. It's also based on our new Clarity user interface, which is being adopted across our portfolio of solutions. This has allowed us to also integrate some of the other tools, such as the vSphere Update Manager. Now let's talk about vSphere Host Lifecycle. We've made several enhancements again to the vSphere Lifecycle management features. I already mentioned that we now include in the vCenter server appliance the Update Manager. We're also including host profiles and auto-deploy and have made enhancements to all of these, which we'll discuss here in the next couple of slides. Again, previously the Update Manager had to be installed on a Windows server. This created additional VMs, configuration, database dependency, with no inherent backup or failover as well. 
This also meant that you had to have another Windows license and potentially database license as well. With the new vCenter Server Appliance, it's integrated and embedded by default into the vCenter Server Appliance. It requires no setup and uses the embedded database. Everything is configured for you right out of the box. The best part is it leverages the native HA and backup portion within the new appliance. The built-in host profiles functionality has had some enhancements done to it as well. The enhancements related to manageability are that we have added editor enhancements that offer the ability to filter and save favorites. You can bulk edit host customizations using CSV file formats and also has a streamlined remediation wizard. From an operational perspective, it pre-checks your proposed changes before implementing them, provides detailed compliance results, as well as DRS integration and parallel remediation capabilities. There's also a new filter in the host profiles editor making the management of host profiles easy to use. You're now able to do bulk edits to host customizations, making management at scale easier and quicker than ever before. The new side-by-side -side results view enables you to quickly configure and assess your potential changes. For enhancements related to auto-deploy in vSphere 6.5, from the operational perspective, there is an enhanced graphical user interface for image builder and the deploy rules, and it also has post-boot scripts for advanced configurations as well as some other improvements. From a performance and resiliency standpoint, there have been scalability improvements for over 300 plus host capability. The appliance HA and backup support is included and round robin reverse proxy caching is also included. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the vSphere APIs, the CLI, command line tool, and the SDK. So we've made some improvements to our vCenter API. There's a new REST API to do VM management. This is a more simplified and modern API design that most organizations are using when developing applications for automation as well as DevOps. It provides full feature SDKs, CLI, and workflow access. It makes it easier for third-party vendors to write APIs to plug into and manage vSphere now. All of these features help reduce development complexity and time, while providing modern standardized APIs and models with a simple point of access for all API samples. We've also included a new API Explorer, which helps navigate REST-based APIs for vCenter, appliance management, tags, content library, and API query. It also makes determining required fields much easier, gives you a detailed filter information, and a live try out feature, and then several other new capabilities. For those that prefer scripting, the new Power CLI command line tool is fully module based. This allows you to automate almost all daily operational tasks using scripting. It also supports outputs in the following formats, such as simple, table, JSON, XML, and HTML. Our updated vSphere CLI now offers support for the following OSs, Red Hat Enterprise Linux Server, SLES, Ubuntu LTS, Windows 7 and 8, Windows Server 2008 and 2012. It also allows access to it also allows access to ESX CLI commands, VI config commands, other Perl commands, and data center command line interface. The data center CLI offers the following capabilities. It is the client of the vCloud Suite SDK. It's accessible via the vCSA shell or the vCenter server appliance. Windows vCenter Server Command Prompt, and the vCLI installation package. The interactive shell mode supports tab completion, saves your history across sessions, and commands are cached at the endpoint. And finally, the supported output formats include simple, table, JSON, XML, and HTML. With 6.5, you have a choice between automation SDKs for multiple languages, a choice of command line tools using Power CLI commandlets, or the data center CLI. Naming is consistent with the APIs, it has vRealize orchestrator integration, and the docs are automatically generated for REST APIs and SDKs. So that completes this session of the part one of my technical overview of what's new in vSphere 6.5 covering vSphere and vCenter administration. I hope this information was valuable to you. Uh, again, this was part one of three, so I'll be doing two more follow-on sessions as part of the series covering what's new to vSphere 6.5. So please come back and join me to watch part two and three of what's new with vSphere 6.5. Thank you and have a wonderful day.